Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Live Your Spa Life Show. Spa life is a lifestyle that accepts that accomplishment and harmony coexist. The spa and spa life, the SPA, is for seek power always, that power within you to do your deeper and bigger work. I am so thrilled to have my next guest today, who is Kimberlyn Brown. She is an actress and better known to many of you out there as Sheila Carter on The Bold and Beautiful and The Young and Restless. She is also a businesswoman that employs over 150 people. She is a farmer of avocados. She's got a beautiful grove uh, and a philanthropist, and it just the list goes on and on. Girlfriend, welcome to the show. Well, thank you. And thanks for having me. I, I'm, I'm so excited to be here and congratulations on your show. Oh, thank you. I so appreciate it. I just, you know, uh, one of the things like when you and I first met, it's just like there's been this instant chemistry of just diving into each other's lives and how we can support each other. And, and you're just one of those people that is just always there to to help and, and involved. And I love just the variety of the things that you do. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people who you know, they know about Sheila Carter. She, she is just a, you know, renowned popular villainess. And has any other character actually gone on two different shows? You know what? I, um, I know that, that my crossover between Young and the Restless and Bold and Beautiful was the number one crossover that was successful in daytime history. Uh, there were a few after that. And I think maybe a couple before, but the ones before were never... Um, were never successful. No. So I, I guess I can say that myself and Tracy Bregman were fortunate enough to be the first that made it stick and made it work. Got it. So you are such this, like, I mean, you're just like the girl next door that everyone just loves. And to play a villainess, how do you get the depth of that character? And what have you learned from Sheila? You know what, Diane, I, I believe that you can talk yourself into anything. And the acting coach that I studied under taught me that, that you can, a lot of actors will prepare with, oh, I need to be sad today. So I'm going to think of an animal, a pet or something like that has passed away or somebody dear to me. But once you start getting upset because of that and start saying your lines, then that emotion goes away because that's not part of your scene where if you convince yourself of an emotion and people do it every single day in life. I, I mean, look at when you have a friend that calls you and they're so upset about something, the more they talk about it, the more upset they become. Right. And then look at that same friend that calls you and they're so excited about something, the more they talk about that, the more excited they become. We really have great control over our bodies that I think a lot of people don't know about. You can, you can literally convince your body of, of anything. And I was fortunate enough to, to study under the right people so that I could, I could get to those levels that Sheila needed to be at to, to make the scenes work. And my takeaway from that as, as Kimberlyn is what I just said, we, we all can convince ourselves of, of anything. You have that power to, to talk your body into that. So let's talk our bodies into being happy and successful and, and positive because it takes a lot less energy to be those things than to be nasty or negative or downright mean. Right. Well, speaking of emotions, you know, fear is in the air, right? There is just so much uncertainty, a lot of things going on. You know, fear is is hampering people's freedoms. There's a lot of things that are happening out there. What are some of the things that you do to get past fear? And, you know, you're also a, a political activists, right? And you're about helping and supporting, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, small businesses and women in business. You know, how do you address the, the fear that's happening? You know, a lot of the fear to me is confusing because the story never stays the same. Uh, <laughs> the one thing that I learned when I was running for politics is if you tell the truth, your story never changes. Yes. When you look at the players involved, the story has changed constantly constantly um, from no you don't need a mask to no you do need a mask and now you need two masks and maybe three masks it just makes more sense well you know what there comes a time when you need to be making decisions based off of common sense and not emotion and i think a lot of what's going on is politically activated to to see exactly what they can get away with with the american public 
Let's see how many people are going to follow what we tell them they need to do to lead. And I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination that, that COVID hasn't been horrible and has cost human life. But at the same time, if you look at states that have stayed open, you look at countries that have stayed open and how their rates and their numbers are far lower than California or New York, for instance, something's very wrong out there. Very, very wrong. I think a lot of control is what people want because it's a very powerful thing for them. And there are certain people that that simply thrive on that power, on that control, and on making people do what they want them to do and tell them what they want to do. When the majority of politicians that work for us today that I found out about when I was running for office, they went from college to getting a job as an intern in a a powerful office in Washington, D.C. or on on a state level. And this is an honest story. This is what happened to me when I was in D.C. I went in to meet with a very powerful Republican office. And there were two young men in there, young because anybody younger than me is young. And they were probably in their early 30s. And they said for over an hour, they went on and on and on about themselves and how they got to where they were. You know, I I graduated from college. I got a job as an intern. I was such a great intern that they put me on staff. And I was such a great staffer that they, they put me in charge of fundraising. I was so good at fundraising. They made me chief of staff. I was so good at chief of staff. I now am in charge of this organization that's currently interviewing you. Wow. And I sat there going, oh my gosh. You have never, you've never worked in the private sector. You have gone straight from college into government and you don't know how everyday people live and the struggles that they go through because you as a government official will never live under those same rules and regulations that you actually vote upon to, to, to put on, on the, the peoples of America. And I learned on both sides of the aisle that people lie. They tell you exactly what they think you want to hear, not the truth. And I don't know if it's because they don't think we can handle the truth or if it's just because they've lied for so long, they don't know how to tell the truth any longer. Right. I think we need to get rid of people that that are well past their prime. And, you know, our, our forefathers never anticipated or, or never planned for people to get into government and make it a career. It was get in, do your best for your constituents and go back to the private sector. There are way too many people in government today that have never worked in the private sector. So they really have nothing to go back to. Right. And, you know, these people are supposed to have positions that, <clears throat> that excuse me, represent the people. Right. And exactly. if they've never done the work of the people, they've never see like what's important to the people. And, you know, the foundation of our country is about having your personal freedom. It is the background of small business. It's about being able to speak your truth. And we're seeing more you know, censorship than ever. Right. There's, you know, no matter, you know, and it's not even I don't think of any more about, you know, Republican or Democrat. It's about, you know, can you speak your truth? Right. And I love you talking about truth and, you know, to be able to have healthy discussions and that if someone has a different opinion of yours, that they you know shut you down in any way. That's just not the foundation of of what our country was about or what we were doing. And, you know, and especially these things now about uh, these government entities, you know, saying like what's considered essential. Well, if your business is, you know, the, the means for your family to live, that is essential to your business and to your community. Um, how are you addressing, I mean, you're someone who has, you know, a lot of employees, uh, several, you know, small businesses, uh, you know, what's your advice to small business to maneuver this landmine of what's going on right now? You know, it's, it's, it's really, it's difficult for me to say because everything is on an individual basis. Um, I know that the PPP money was very helpful to me. Um, it, it kept my employees employed and working, but what happens with the small businesses that their banks weren't really working for them or with them to help them get those PPP loans? Uh, it's, it's, I don't think that the government should have the right to tell you that you have to fail 
and lose your livelihood because of a mandate that they put upon you. Like I said, I know that COVID is very real. People have died from it, but there had to be ways to keep businesses open and not pick and choose winners or losers. Politicians pick winners and losers. I found that out when I was running for office. Even people in my own party that decided that I was not going to be a mouthpiece for certain higher ups in the party, but a mouthpiece for my constituents, that was a problem for them. So they wouldn't get behind me for those reasons. Um, I literally had people lie to my face and tell me what they were going to do for me and then never come through where I grew up, where I had grandparents and parents that instilled in me, Diane, that if I were going to tell you something, I'm going to follow through with that something, or I'm going to, I'm going to bust my, you know, what trying to right. do that for you. But as far as COVID with businesses today, the, how, how, how do I even begin to say something when you've got a governor in the state of California that has closed down every single winery in the state, except for his and his aunt Pelosi's vineyards, even right. though Pelosi doesn't make wine, she grows grapes for wine. Um, and then when you have a governor that has de declared a green zone around his winery and, and, and his friends' wineries, putting other wineries in the region out of business, it, it's just, it's insane to me. Uh, absolute insanity. There's the, the do as I say, not as I do mentality is something that the American public in every state has got to stop. They've, they've got to start voting in, in a smart manner. And I don't care if it's Republican or independent or Democrat, vote for good people in those parties right. that are going to actually do what they say and say what they mean. Um, the, the pandering that goes on that I discovered firsthand is remarkable. I mean, it's sickening is what it is. There are good people on both sides of the aisle. I found that out when I was running for office. It's just that as, as with anything, as you know, it's the squeaky wheel that gets the oil. Right. And for far too long, ladies and gentlemen, we've been silent and as you can see on social media today, they're taking away that ability to speak as well. I was I was at a doctor's appointment yesterday and it was interesting. Um, the nurse asked me if I had my COVID vaccination. I said, no, I hadn't. And we started talking about COVID vaccines. I said, I'm not on the list yet. You know, I'm not the right age yet. And quite honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm a little, you know, I kind of like to see where it's going before I, I put my arm out there. Um, not to say that it's a wrong decision for anybody who wants it right now and, and, and get it right now. Great. That's good. That's your decision. And you can do that. But we were talking about, um, you know, the, the mandates for vaccines, how the story constantly changes, why this is needed, why masks are needed, why they're not needed and, and, and going back and forth, back and forth. And this woman out of nowhere who wasn't even in the room with the people that were having the discussion came in and screamed at the top of her lungs. This is a private location and I don't care to hear anybody's political views. Well, we weren't even talking about politics. We right. were talking about the, the statements that have been out in the public forum mm -hmm. for months and in some cases over a year but she shut the room down completely where people were afraid to open their mouth again because wow. of the one squeaky wheel. And I think that's what's happening all across America today. And with social media, they're shutting you down and telling you what you can and cannot say, even in a public forum. And it's, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. I, I, I didn't grow up that way. You didn't grow up that way. People used to be able to talk freely right. amongst themselves. John, John, Jonathan Banks is a dear friend of mine. And, and we're on complete opposite sides of the aisle. But by gosh, we love to get together and talk and, mm -hmm. you know, discuss things and, you know, have a glass of wine at the, at the end of the day. But right. 
People aren't doing that anymore. They're telling you what you can believe, what you can say. And if you don't believe in what they do, they shut you down. It's, you know, very dear friend of mine, Herman Cain, he calls it sin. And I'll tell you why. Because S means you, you switch the topic. I means you ignore the facts. And when that doesn't work, N, you name call. And I see that going on across the, the entire United States today. And it's it's sad to think that we are no longer a society with open thought and open open dialogue. Right. You can only right. speak if 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 you fit the narrative at the time. Right. Well, which is why I love this conversation so much, because it gives you an opportunity to, no matter what your personal feeling is, when you start hearing other sides or you start expressing your own side, you kind of go, oh, okay, that's a good point, right? I'm going to take that into consideration. I'm going to do my own research on that and see what is important for myself and my body. I still have freedom over my body and what I choose. You know, right. when people ask me about it, I'm not choosing uh, a vaccination myself either. I look at it as I don't buy the first car off the lot or the first cell phone because they're working out the bugs, right? Exactly. And yeah. so I'm not going to be that first in line for that. You know, I think there's a lot more things that need to be determined around that, but that's right. my choice to be made and to be able to have that conversation. There's lots of reasons for, and I've got people, you know, around me who have gotten it and they've got their own personal reasons um, for that. But we have to look at, you know, that's just one aspect of it. You know, what are some of the things, you know, we look at COVID and, and yes, you're right. It's affected a lot of people, but, you know, people die of the flu and influenza and, and lots of things. Anyway, I think people forgot that people actually die from those things. That's, that's because they haven't this last year. <clears throat> right. Except this year. That's one thing COVID exactly. did, did uh, cure is, is the, the flu. Um, but, and to have something that has a recovery rate of like 98%, right, is such a huge thing. And to have the reactions that are happening that shut down businesses and, and people not having a full understanding of viruses that we actually need to be out in the sunshine and we actually need to be exposed to other people because that's how we build our immune system. And we know our immune system is the thing that gets compromised. And, you know, the separation that's happening with people is, um, Really Lots amazing. Lots of vitamin D. People need to be doubling up on that sort of stuff right now. But, right. you know, the one thing that I learned when I was in acting class, sitting in the audience, watching performers up on stage, you, you learn from other people's mistakes. And then, like you said earlier, you take the best of that performance and you remember what they did to get there. But what's happening right now is we're not allowed to, to watch everybody's performance, to take what we want from that experience. We're only given one choice and one decision. And that's like this woman speaking up in this room. She had no right to do that. Right. None whatsoever. And if it were that offensive, <clears throat> she could have walked out into the hallway. But but when she specifically said, I don't want to hear your politics, we weren't even talking politics. So if that if that is any indication as to how people don't listen today, mm -hmm. they're reactionary. Right. And I'll tell you what, you learn a lot more by listening than by being reactionary. Right. Absolutely. So, so important. And, you know, uh, when you look at how you look at your life, we get to create our life, like we get to actually design and make choices. And I love how you look at saying, like, uh, when people say that you can't, that you look at it as a challenge, and uh, you've always been a driven person. Share a little bit about how that has um, supported you in, in doing some of the things you want to do. Well, you know, from a very young age, I had very dear ones next to me, my mom included, telling me, oh, well, you'll never be an actress. You'll never be a model. You'll never do this. You'll never do that. Um, going as far as, as having people very dear and near to me that, you know, I considered my big brother, take me out to dinner and say, Kimberlyn, you're not tall enough. You're not pretty enough. You know, just to try and spare my feelings. I mean, it came from a place of love in their mind, but I have always been that person. Tell me I can't do it and I'm going to do it and bring it back and show you and put it right in front of your face <laughs> and say you're wrong. And now I want to hear what you have to say. And I I've kind of done that my entire life. I, I mean, have I had failures? Of course I've had failures, 
but I've learned by those failures that have only made me stronger to get up and do what I wanted to do in the future that much, much faster and, and more efficiently. Um, you know, acting is not my only life. Like you said, I, I employ over 150 people over 180 during summer, my busiest time of the year. And then I'm also an avocado farmer a farming in, in America and, and in California specifically is, is a difficult challenge today because of the water regulations that have been imposed upon people who actually produce food for the country versus, you know, people watering their, their lawns in, in um, posh areas of, of the state. I mean, it's like, I wonder sometimes if kids even realize where their food comes from today, I've got to be honest, but, but all of these things that, that I've gone through personally have only made me stronger. Mm -hmm. They make you resilient and they make you better prepared for the next time around. So my advice to other people that are listening to your show and watching your show is don't give up. And people that tell you, oh, you can't do that. You shouldn't be doing this or, or that or the other. Otherwise, don't listen to them because negativity loves to bring down positivity. And it's so much easier to be positive than negative and so much less energy, like I said earlier. So, so don't let somebody tell you that you can't because that's what they believe. Right. Just believe in yourself and, and what you're able to do. Right, right. Oh, I love this. You know, so much about like uh, the Hollywood world, right? You know, we see things in tabloids and a lot of families, have, you know, broken up and 50 divorces and, and, you know, all of these things. And, you know, you and Gary have been together like a quarter of a century, right? Okay. And it's a long, long time. And your family and, you know, because I know you personally there, I know that there's been up and downs, like all families, you know, children, they just, you know, they, they challenge us in all kinds of ways and, and life and, you know, being a, a working mom and all of those things. What do you think has, has helped you have that sustainability to, uh, you know, keep your, your family together and uh, that you, you love and like each other at the same time? You know, I, I always fight for my family that that mm -hmm. saying blood is, is thicker than, I mean, blood is thicker than water, obviously. So, um, I never give up on people. I don't, when other people tell me that, you know, oh, your daughter is this, or your son is this, or your husband is that I, I kind of look at them and I say, well, that's what children are called children and parents are called parents. And it's our job to guide and to lead the best that we possibly can. And when you need help, not to be afraid to ask for help. As you know, I have asked for help before. Mm -hmm. And um, my kids are, are strong, strong today. And I think it's because they know mom has been strong all these years for them, never backing down, never giving up. Mm -hmm. And I would tell parents out there today, I mean, if you have that wild child, just hold on to your hat, you know, tighten your belt because that ride is going to get, get pretty, pretty crazy. And it might spin at times, but at the end of the day, the teacup does stop and the ride does stop. And you, uh, you have just, a beautiful light that, that opens up over your entire family and, and don't ever lose sight of what can happen for you and your family. Don't ever give up. I've, I've known Gary since I was 13. My husband started dating him when I was 18. Was it always perfect? No, I broke up with him for three years in between, but probably more because I was ready to get married. He wasn't. And, you know, we came back together years later and, and things just, just worked out. And the kids have been a blessing to me. They truly have. That's one of the reasons I went into daytime TV was so that I could be a stay home mom as much as possible right. and be home for those family dinners. I, I think a lot of families today have gotten away from what I grew up with, what you grew up with, and that's family time. Yeah. Um, schools have turned into babysitters in a lot of cases. Um, not all, but in a lot. Mm -hmm. And I would say to parents everywhere out there, please get back to 
to being a family and listen to one another and listen to your kids. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, when a lot of people were locked down and not connecting with parents and grandparents and all of this, you know, separation, you know, our our family came together. You know, we're like, you know what? We're a family. We're going to be together. We're going to spend time together. We would have weekends together. And, you know, it's just, it's, what is your your vision for your life and who are the people, I mean, the people who are in your life is, is what really matters and, and what that, that looks like. And it's, it's so huge. Um, so I just, I love to hear, uh, you know, people that fight for their family, right. That it's, it's important. Like if you're going to fight for anything, right. These are the people that uh, matter the most. And, you know, sometimes, uh, people who don't have close families, you know, to have, to create that inner circle with their friends, uh, but you got to have people that have your back and that you can have discussions with and you can connect with and you can do that. And um, so one of the things I love asking my guests on the show, and and this is uh, especially with you as a, as a designer. So a lot of people may not know as well, while you were doing daytime, you were building this big, beautiful design business where you thrived in, in Las Vegas and you would fly and, you know, people wanted you to design, you know, their homes and, you know, you actually became accredited in that as well. I mean, it's like something that was just, uh, it's a definitely talent and skill of yours. And so one of the things I like to ask is that we, you know, experience life differently in the bedroom versus our office or our kitchen. So what is your favorite room in your home and why? You know, my favorite room is my kitchen. And, and I, I love to create, I love to cook. My daughter loves to cook. She cooks in there with me all the time. And the kitchen seems to be the place in the household that everybody congregates to. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, when you're cooking a dinner for friends and family, or even putting together appetizers, where does everybody go? They go to the kitchen yeah. to help whoever's in there. Everyone get, gets their hands in and, and it's, it's just a warm, friendly place to be. It really is. That's that's my favorite space. I've got I love a, that. Yeah. I have a friend of mine that says that life happens between the kitchen and the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> well, more in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or waiting in line to get to the bathroom. It depends uh, exactly. what, what your exactly. setup is there. Oh my God, exactly. it's so good. Yeah. So uh, generosity is also a, a huge part of your heart. And not only did you do it one time, but you did it twice where you donated bone marrow. And that is just, uh, it's, it's kind of like this once in a lifetime to actually find someone who's a match and then to have it happen twice. Um, what was your path on that? How did you decide that that was the way you wanted to give? And were you surprised when it happened twice? I was surprised. I was living in San Juan Capistrano at the time and the school um, that my kids were going to, they were going to the mission San Juan Capistrano and one of the kids' dads came down with leukemia and he owned a very popular restaurant in town and he put on a, a, you know, come in for a glass of wine and appetizers and get tested. So I, of course, you know, went and, and got tested and we were told while we were there that you, it'll probably never happen in your lifetime, that the odds are so incredibly rare mm -hmm. and they were right. I was not a match. <clears throat> and unfortunately he did not find a match, but less than a year later, I got a phone call. Pardon me saying that I was a match for a little girl who was born in Europe and would I be able to do a, a bone marrow transplant? And I said, yes, absolutely. And there's a lot that goes into that, um, you know, shots that lead up to it. Your bone marrow is of course in, inside your bones, but they inject you with filgrestrum to make the, the, the platelets release into your blood faster for easier, easier collection. Um, not all bone marrow transplants today are done surgically through your hip or your thigh. It's, it's done by circulating your blood through a machine and taking out the platelets that are needed and putting whole blood back into your body. Mm -hmm. So I said yes for this little girl in Europe. And because she was so far away, they had to do a double collection. So I was working at, at CBS and I literally had a nurse coming in to the studio while I was getting my hair and makeup done, giving me my filgrestrum shots wow. um, to prep me for, for a bone marrow transplant. It's not the most pleasant thing in the world, but when you, think of, when you think of what the person has to go through that's receiving mm -hmm. your bone marrow or your platelets, um, 
it's it's mind blowing. I they they basically nuke that person's body, and the worst blister you would ever see on the outside of your body is all on the inside of their body as well. Wow. And the one thing that I I had been told is please when you say yes, just don't back out because once we prep that person's body for what you're giving them, they can't back out. Right. And it happens all too often where people get afraid. They get, they're fearful of what their own body's going through. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I did it twice. Once for this little girl. And then believe it or not, two years later, I was called again. And I matched all six markers on both of these people, which is really difficult. Hard. It's, it's very, very rare. And then the saddest part is, is two years after my last bone marrow transplant, my, my first cousin was diagnosed with leukemia and they wouldn't even test me for him because after you give two donations, they don't want you to do any more because they truly don't know the long-term effects of that on, right. on your body. And, um, you know, my cousin unfortunately passed away, but I've, I'm very, very thankful that I was able to help two people that I, I had to this day have never met. Right. Because I would pray if, if my kids needed anything like that, somebody would step up to the plate and help them as well. Mm-hmm. well I've been on the list since 2008 and I've not gotten a call at all. And they said it, it's, it's going to be a rare one, one in a million. And one was- of my good friends, uh, her friend was in, in deep need and, and she also didn't uh, survive and didn't find a match. Um, but that's what kind of kickstarted uh, just knowing about it and getting on, on the list and, and being mm-hmm. part of that. So um, yeah, so Thank you for being willing. Everybody should go out and get tested in my opinion. And it's something so easy to do when you go in for your regular blood work, you can just say, Hey, go ahead and test me for, uh, for the bone marrow right. uh, uh, list and, and put me in the system, please. Yeah, definitely. Well, I know that you always have things in the works. So what is on, on the plate for coming up next? Well, you know, um, I had a terrible accident last year that set me back. And I'm still recovering from that. I was supposed to start filming a new sitcom, actually February of this year. And we're pushing it back a year now because of, of COVID and because of my injury. But it's going to be great. It's, it's a half hour sitcom. Uh, Jonathan Banks has agreed to be in it with me. And the cast is, is wonderful. It's going to shoot up in Bemidji, Minnesota. And it's all about outdoors. It's fishing. It's hunting. It, it's snowmobiling. It's, you know riding razors through the forest. It, it, uh, it's all based around a, um, a, a bait and tackle store. And I wish I could tell you more. I'm going to have to come on again when I can, I can tell you all about it, but it's, it's going to be a family show that you can watch with your kids. There's going to be plenty of innuendo for adults. Um, you'll get, you'll get slapped up beside the head uh, at the end of the, the scene, because you're going to be thinking one thing and realize it was in your mind, not what was actually going on, which is what's going to be really great about it. And then I have, um, I have a company out of Arizona that has come after me for, um, for some great business motivational speeches. So I'm, I'm excited to be, be working on that as well. And then I'm, I'm buying a new bait and tackle store here in San Diego as well. So that'll give me three. (laughs) I love it how there's always this variety that you have in your life. And I just, I love it. The, the spiciness of it, the just, you know, it allows you to have this, this pulse on America, right. About small businesses and what, what, you know, works for people, what doesn't, I mean, cause you're in the trenches with it. That's why I respect your opinion so much. Cause you're just, you're in it, you know, and it's so nice to have, have that. So, uh, as I had shared our theme for, for this season, um, of the show is being a force for good. So how are you being a force for good in the world? You know, and I know you said that to me and a force for good, um, I just keep doing what I'm doing, Diane. You know, I, I'd be, I'm honest, um, forthright, and I try and pass that on to my kids and, and everyone around me as well. It, it's kind of, like I said earlier, if someone's telling you the same story over and over again, but that story's changing, chances are it's not true. 
So stay true to yourself. Always speak the truth and your story never changes. So you sleep very well at night. You can get up in the morning and look at yourself in the mirror and actually smile and not think of, Ooh, what do I have to do to protect myself today? So, you know, keep, keep strong, keep your beliefs in check. Um, and don't let anybody take those beliefs away from you because that's what people are trying to do today. I truly believe that in, in, in good versus evil. And for me, it's about being good. Yes, absolutely. You And you definitely are that force for good. And we so appreciate that. And I know that our listeners are going to want to stay in contact with you. How can they do that? You know, I'm, I'm not huge on social media. I've got to be honest. The best way would probably be on Instagram. I do respond to, uh, you know, direct messages on Instagram, that sort of thing. And, and I do have a public Instagram. Um, that would probably be the best way for now. I'd love to come back on your show in, in a few months when I can tell you about these other things I have going on, uh, because I also have a wonderful apparel line that, that I'm working on right now. And I'll be able to, to tell you more about that then as well. I would love that. We'd love to have you back on anything to help, you know, small businesses and freedom and the back of, of, you know, the backbone of America out there and just so appreciate. And thank you for sharing your wisdom. You're someone who has put in, you know, the time and the energy and, you know, I, I so respect that about you. Well, I, I appreciate that. I respect you, Diane. I mean, a lot of people don't know your background probably as, as deeply as, as I might. And I, 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 I appreciate you like you, you cannot possibly imagine. So thank you for that. Oh, my pleasure so much. And for our listeners out there, you know, it's such a, a blessing for us to be able to connect with you. Thank God we have the podcast that we can actually talk about what we think about and hopefully have something that you're maybe thinking about a little bit differently today, get really solid in what your values are, what's important to you, how you want to live your life. Uh, you know, that that is spa life. That's what we're talking about here. So please, you know, share the, the show, uh, subscribe, any comments, any takeaways. We'd love to see those on there. Make sure you, you tag us in there and we'll answer any questions that you have. So until we connect again, live your spa life. Bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye.